Yeah? What do you mean you're running short on Kylo videos? Man, this bull <laughs>like some of you are thinking maybe I fell off the face of the earth or something. I feel like I need to explain, I guess, where I've been and what's been going on. We took a family trip to the beach. At, at first I was just gonna take like a week off from making editing videos type deal, but the family wanted me to make a beach video, so I did some video in there. And then as soon as we got back home, we were immediately thrust into a uh, family hospice situation. Jennifer being a nurse was the nurse for the hospice thing. Our papa passed away. It was just a lot going through. We had a lot of family in town. Basically, I just took off to kind of be with the family, handle up on some extra chores and stuff since Jennifer was preoccupied. After that, I just sort of took some time for myself. Uh, I skipped Oshkosh. As soon as he died, it was like a few days before it was time to leave and I just frankly didn't feel like traveling or anything. I did a full week at work. My brother, in the meantime, went to Hawaii on his summer vacation. So he was gone for over a week and I was having to also pull his slack at work. Uh, basically life just sort of, you know, it comes and goes in waves. Sometimes you get a big one and you got to, you got to reprioritize some things and that's sort of what happened. I was cooking ribs down at the Lake Arlen Country Store. Couldn't resist it. Go down here to the lake, look around, have a picnic, eat me some ribs. Mmm, they're delicious too. This is kind of where I grew up learning to fish. I used to hit this lake all the time. I didn't live too far from here, but now I live further. So I sold my boat. I've got a place I can fish at home. Still wanted to come out here and check it out. Just wasting some time. here was a time lapse I was trying to do with the sunset one evening I set them up sometimes I don't use them but what actually happened here was I captured the birth of a storm uh, the sunset sort of petered out into nothing but this huge storm welled up and kind of started drifting to the north and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I got this uh, cool shot of some lightning coming up and I say cool it was you know telephone photo but I got a steel frame of it anyway and it just sort of progressed into this huge system. It was gigantic. That was just one sale. I thought it was over with, but when I went to bed, I got woke up and this is what was going on. There's probably a 40 to 50 mile an hour gust front blasting off of this thing. It is some insane weather going off at this thing. The wind, the rain, the lightning. I looked out the window, I seen the trees bending over. I already went to bed thinking it had long gone. Uh, this exploded into a huge system. I mean, from a speck on the radar over toward the sunset to like 100 miles of red. That's what we're seeing right here. 100 miles of dang red. Cool. Feels really nice though. The mosquitoes can't bite you in a 50 mile an hour wind. Looks like I'm back. Actually, I didn't do much flying either. I did, as soon as everything sort of settled and the waves calmed, I, uh, I took a trip to the mountains and did a couple days in the mountains and did some free flight. Didn't get much video of that. Yeah, I believe there is a video of me launching into a huge thermal and sucked me up about a thousand feet. That was awesome. And here's the video of that launch. Thank you so much, Rena. I had no idea I was being videoed here. I got to the mountain and this was just about 10 minutes after I got there. I saw it look good, so I bailed. I timed the cycle just right so that I was able to snag the thermal on the front end. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> the reason I wasn't turning is because I was close to the mountain and the wind was strong. I didn't want to put myself in a bad situation low over the back. There's nowhere to land behind this launch, so I had to get out in front first. Wow, no effort in that lift. <laughs> I know some of my older fans know that I don't usually record my free flights, but I did pull my phone out for this one and just took a, I don't know, 30 seconds of video when I was out flying around later that evening. It got hands off. I did about a two hour session on the ridge. Uh, what a good day. It was just a good day. Hands off. 
I was just enjoying it. Kylo needed this, y'all. I guess I'm back. This is sort of my first installment. So the next couple videos are going to be sort of like, you know, Pulp Fiction, back in time, rewind, whatever, back and forth. Just ignore the timeline on the next couple of videos. It's going to be, I guess this next section is uh, Woody had asked a question on Facebook specifically to me about, I think, what I had learned being an instructor for a while. So it was too windy to fly one day and I just sort of rambled around about instruction. I don't even know if I actually answered the question, Woody. Sorry about that, but uh, here you go. Hey, dogs, what y'all doing? Some thoughts on paramotor paragliding instruction. I'm a tourist of the sky. I have to use machines and wings to fly. It's a it's an acquired skill, and I'm constantly trying to hone that skill, get better, do things properly, safely. You know, make good decisions. It's just all about making good decisions. And when you're teaching someone to fly, you're trying to teach them how to make good decisions. There's a progression to it, and everybody follows the progression at a different pace, I guess. Some people it takes you know three lessons to even learn how to clip in. Some people by their first day, they're ready to fly because they've got the skills. I've, I've seen it both ways. Some people may never grasp it. It's, it's just variable. The wind is honking today, so I'm not gonna try to fly. I could, I guess, but I just don't think it will be fun. I'm having more fun just cruising around the block on, on this thing right here. Oh my gosh, I think my dogs are chasing me. Let me turn around. Can't have the dogs over here at the neighbors. They try to kill the neighbor's cat every time. Come on, we're going back home. The Doberman speed, the wiener dog speed. Instructors, I guess, are just like doctors or police officers or anything. There's all kinds, there's all flavors. Some are just in it for the money. Some are just in it. Some have been in it since the beginning. Some just got in it and lack experience. I don't know, man, it's, it's tough to put into words. I don't even know if I'm a good instructor or not. I don't know, I just try to do right and show right and teach right but the teacher student relationship is heavily biased toward the student they're the ones putting in the work they're the ones going through the motions you know having the experience to see someone doing something wrong and correcting them on it that's what i do and what i see hopefully i help people that's that's really the goal is to help people do this things safely and effectively and I've gained enough knowledge in my time and I'm able to pass that on even not in, in an in, instructor student environment just like somebody on the mountains like hey man if you'll do this it works better kind of the same thing you were asking in your question Woody about I guess I've got enough experience to effectively teach any part of the paramotor journey and you know there's people better than me but I just love it man I just love it I'm happy to help holler at me if you need me much love guys Kyle out <laughs>